this. Is the G and G GTP9? Could this be the greatest airsoft pistol package ever put together? Oh, that's a bit of a stretch, but I tell you what, let's have a look. People, this is the G&G GTP9. And would you look at the case? Absolutely loving the design on the case, that beautiful chromey silver looking badge. Oh my gosh, I can't tell the last time I got this excited about an airsoft pistol and what it comes with. Yes, I know I practically get excited about every airsoft gun, but you know when I get super uber excited. And come to think of it, the last time I got this excited about an airsoft gun was when I got this baby. Mm, the presentation of that TM was amazeballs. Now, this also looks amazing. So let's get it open. Let's see what we get in the box. Oh, 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 come on, come on. Would you feast your eyes on this? What a nice, neat package. Now, straight away, I'll show you up here, you've got your manual, and then here in the main part of the case, you've got a full metal mag, a nice crystal clear see-through speed loader, a back strap, a spare back strap, and would you look at this, a nice chrome effect plate or plaque that not only has the model and make of this pistol, it has the corresponding serial number that matches with the pistol. Although I wish it wasn't just a sticker. And then of course, as I showed you earlier, there's this manual that's tucked away neatly in that pocket right there. I think this is really cool, the way G&G &G have presented this. And uh, oh, look, there's something else. <laughs> oh, what a nice touch. A little patch that matches your pistol. Yes, a little patch of this bad boy. So before we go any further, let me show you all the accessories close up. So this is your spare back strap. So this will make the grip bigger if you've got large hands. And then you've got this gorgeous looking speed loader. Yes, I just referred to a speed loader as gorgeous. And the reason for that, again, you quite often don't get them looking like this. And look, it's also G&G &G branded. It's almost like a crystal effect. <laughs> And you also have this full metal mag. Now, apart from the base, of course. Now, before I go any further, let's just complete that picture. Ho, 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 ho. Look at that. So first of all, let's start off with the base. As you can see, you've got your G&G &G branded base plate for your mag, the place where you would put the gas, and you see where it says push, Let's do that. Nice. So what this is, I'm led to believe, is your little hop-up adjustment key. Yes, you heard hop-up adjustment key. So unlike a lot of other gas blowback pistols, you don't need to remove the slide to adjust your hop-up. You simply slot this down the barrel. But before I do that, for safety's sake, let's remove the mag. now. Here's another thing that sets this apart from all my other pistols, and you know I've got one or two pistols. Even the mag release is different. It's actually on your trigger guard right there, and it's ambidextrous. So you simply push down on this right there, and look, that releases your mag. So as I was saying before, you simply slot this little tool in the front, and look, it clicks into place. And if you listen carefully, you can hear your hop up being adjusted and then once you're done just slot it back into the back strap and the great thing is 
You know that other spare back strap that's in the case? It also has an adjustment tool in there also. So if you lose this, you know you've always got a spare. Oh, satisfying click. So let's continue with the grip. As you can see on the back strap, you've got this nice texturized panel right there. Also on each side of the grip and on the front. Do you know, does this remind you of another particular striker fired pistol? Anywho, let's continue. <laughs> Talking about striker fired, this is a striker fired style pistol, meaning there's no visible hammer for you to see or cock, it's all inside there. And there you have your very cool looking sights. Although, you know, I've got to come back to this. This is really letting it down. It's a sticker with the serial number on. It makes it less authentic, really. The fact that it matches what's inside the case is cool, but it would have been so much better if it was actually stamped into the body. But to be fair, it's not just a piece of paper type of sticker. It actually, because I tried pulling it off and it does come off, it's almost like a little, little sheet of metal. If it's not metal, it's very much a very sturdy piece of something. <laughs> it's not just paper. Right, let's move along. You've got these nice sort of serrations right there that makes it easy to rack the slide. You've got the same near the front. And there you have your slide lock and release levers. Now I say the word lever with an S on the end because, and be dexterous baby, look, there's another one on the other side. So if I was to rack this, it should lock back because there are no rounds in the mag and I'll do this from the other side. I'm simply gonna push that down like any other pistol, but from the other side. Nice. Right, let's just uh, release that. There you go. Put this back on safe and yeah, <laughs> a good segue to the safety features of this pistol. So right there is your safety button. You can see it from the other side. It's plain, there's no coloring or anything on there other than a little white dot that signifies it's on safe. And when you're ready to take it off safe, ready to fire, you simply push that little button from the other side and you should see a little red dot. And then we move to the trigger. And again, this piece is really reminding me of another brand of pistol that I happen to be a fanboy of. Anyway, if you look on the trigger itself, just like that other famous pistol, there's a little section right in the center of the trigger that you need to engage to fire this pistol. So that's your second safety mechanism. Now what sets this apart from that other brand of pistol are your takedown levers. They've made it so much more easier on this model. There it is right there. It literally goes, look, if you look beneath, right across to the other side, just like other pistols of this style, you would need to engage with these using your thumb and finger. Now, before I do that, let me just drop the mag again. Then you grab hold of your takedown levers, pull it down and look, look how easy that comes off. And I've got to say, what a handsome set of internals <laughs> you've got in the slide. There's your guide rod, your spring. And as I mentioned earlier, unlike other pistols like this, you do not have your hop-up adjustment wheel. It's all in the front. And have a look here at the lower frame. Very well put together. Nice bit of branding just there. Okay, let's put this back on. Oh, lovely. So what else have we got on this piece? Well, we get to the front, I believe, yeah. Oh, and just check out, check out the cutouts right there. Do you know, technically this is not based on any specific firearm, but you've got to say, it's like a Gucci version of a so you've got your single sight that appears to be adjustable. I don't know if you can just see, that looks like a grub screw right there. And then either side of the sight, it's got scope right there to move left and right. Yeah, so I would say an adjustable front sight. And then we move 
to your barrel adapter. So let's just see if this, yes, that comes off. So let's just have a quick look. Nice. You've got an outer threaded outer barrel. And then you have a nice little handy lower rail. Right, hold on. Let me just take this off. I think this would look a lot better right there. Okay, so there is something I want to tell you about this that also sets this apart from anything else that I own. G&G &G has this whirl cylinder valve within there to prevent frost buildup and the overall design of this pistol should give you better gas efficiency. Now, just before we go for a shooting test, Let's just take in and appreciate the design of this thing. I absolutely love it. Even though it does remind me of something else, there's something quite unique about this. So, as you would have already seen, some nice branding right there on the grip, which will be the same on the other side. And of course, I've already shown you the base. Then you've got this nice sort of chromey silvery gray effect on the barrel right there and the fact that they've got these gorgeous cutouts right there so you can see it in there also very nice that's a big plus for me loving that as well however what's going on with the slide now most places will say it's a polymer slide it's a complete polymer build apart from the barrel and the barrel adapter and your levers and your pins and your internals and even your sights are metal. The slide. Some people say it's plastic, some people say it's metal. And you know what? It is polymer, but oh my gosh, you would be forgiven for thinking that this was metal. The way they have done this, the way it even looks, and even when you touch it, especially if it's cold to the touch, you would think it was metal, some sort of light metal. But I can confirm it's a full quality polymer build. And I'll be honest with you, that's what I don't like. Why couldn't they just put a metal slide on this bad boy? Now, when it comes to gas, it will be safe to say, I ain't got an issue there. I think I've got enough. No, really, I do have enough. <laughs> However, it's a polymer construction, but it will have metal internals. So which gas would you or would you not use? Well, straight away, forget this. I would suggest that would be too strong. That's green gas, that's fine. That's Abbey Predator gun gas, which is designed for plastic or full polymer pistols. Still quite a good gas, don't get me wrong. And I think that's something a bit similar. I'm always a bit dubious about this one right here. It literally doesn't say green gas or anything like that. It's just called Ultra Ear, player's choice. So yeah, maybe I could use that. And upon further research, it turns out this is green gas. This I would only really use if I had issues with a mag. So what have we got left here? I tell you what, let me just take this away. All of these are green gas. Now, this is exactly the same as that. It's just a miniature version, so let's just move that out of the way. This, I know for sure, has silicon oil in it, so I will definitely consider that. So does this, but I kind of prefer that brand. And then there's this. Never used this one before, but boy, do you get a lot of bang for your buck. Look at the size of this thing. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna to stick to what I know, okay? But please do let me know in the comment section what gases you use for your airsoft pistols, especially ones that are predominantly made out of polymer. Because you do have some people saying you shouldn't use green gas in a predominantly polymer or plastic pistol. And some people say they've had no issues using this, especially with their TMs. So that's what I'm gonna use in the G&G so let's do this. Okay, so first thing, let's just make sure this works. As always, I never fire or test these things before a video. I do it during a video. And you know this is true because if you've been with me for a while, you would have noticed I've had two failures in a couple of my videos, one being the grease gun, the other being the APS uh, camo pistol. But anyway, just take it off safe so here we go 
Will it work? Oh, nice. Very nice responsive trigger as well. Okay, let's see what the chrono is saying. 308.2, three zero two point five, three zero two, three hundred point three, three hundred point three again, that's good. <laughs> three zero two point five, two nine eight point one, one more, two nine seven. Yeah, I'd put that at a comfortable 300 on average, yeah? FPS? Right, let's go full auto. Ha, I'm only joking. Right, you know the drill. It's all about getting every shot in that inner circle. Oh, -ho! oh man, that's a good one right there. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so impressed with the accuracy of this thing. I tell you what, let me go rapid fire just to see if I've still got it on point. Oh, <laughs> not bad at all. I am very impressed with this GNG GT P9. The accuracy on point. As you can see there, the majority, no, in fact, all of my shots when I was doing it slower and taking aim carefully, all of my shots landed in that inner bullseye circle right there. Then when I went rapid, still not too bad at all. One or two in the 10 circle and the rest pretty much in the nine. And I think one just edging into that eight circle on the top right there, but oh my gosh. So it goes without saying, I am very impressed with this piece. It looks absolutely beautiful. But, why couldn't they have put a metal slide on this? That would have been a beautiful finish to this. However, for what you get, for the money, you're getting a lot, okay? Even though this is a polymer build, it's a quality build, looks absolutely fantastic. I can't stop going on about it. It is just beautiful. And don't get me started on the case that it comes with. But I will mark you down to nine out of 10 because this slide is not metal. Will there be a metal slide for it in the future? Who knows? Do I care? I tell you what, the way it looks and um, for what you get, nah because this is gonna be a nice showpiece for me. It wouldn't be my sidearm of choice because I wanna keep this looking pristine. I wanna keep this almost as a collector's item purely because of what you get for it. But is it worthy of skirmishing with in gameplay? Hell yes! And even competition shooting. This thing is so accurate, it's ridiculous. Absolutely loving it. And I didn't mention it before, but I'm loving that they put the real rounds that it would take if this were a real pistol <laughs> but yeah gosh if you like what you see take a look down in the video description where you will see a list worldwide of airsoft retailers that have listed this or have it on pre-order i'm airsoft mike thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time oh i love this thing